Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing, and today we're going to be going over some more positioning basics. Basics. Oh, I can't even say that. Well, this is going to be a good one. We're going to be talking about shoulders. Sorry. <laughs> All right, now that that's over, um, shoulders. This one's gonna be a spot of contention for everyone in the industry because everyone has a way that they do shoulders. Even if they don't you know, mention it, talk about it, they don't do whatever. Every time any one of us inside of the industry watches someone doing a shoulder tattoo, we size up how just uncomfortable they look, right? You can have little jokes behind their backs or whatever, right? But these are body killers and these are the tattoos right here. Shoulders that make you have a hunchback. You're gonna do a ton of them in your career. If you're just starting out, like learning the best way to make sure that you're positioning people just effectively can save your back and make sure you can be doing this for 10, 20, 30 years. So, shoulders, how often do people do shoulders? Well, let's go back to our stick people here. Someone sits in a chair, right? This is a big chair and tiny head. They got their arms down and the artist is usually just nearby, right? Doing whatever, putting their arms up and just, yeah, I guess it's a baby doing it, but yeah, so they're doing this, right? You're sitting with your back straight, holding your arms up to the person's shoulder and working. Now this is not a good way to do it, right? Because what you're doing is you're putting an intense amount of strain on the upper part of your back, which slowly over time, and you can think about this. If you wanna do an experiment, no tattooing. You can be a client as well. If you're watching this, you're a client. Go sit in a chair and hold your hands like this. If you have a lamp or something, rest your hands against it and don't move it for eight hours. You'll slowly just start sinking forward because these muscles in your back are just gonna get completely and utterly exhausted. Some people will say you can throw an armrest underneath your arm. It doesn't matter. You as the tattooer are gonna have your arms up for so long that you're slowly just gonna start getting bent over. The muscles in your back are gonna become either atrophied because they've been overworked, or they'll start to get so built up you just start hunching over. You need to make sure your core is engaged when you're doing this stuff as well, not just pulling back with your back, right? Get rid of the beer bellies. So how do we do shoulders? The best way is you get a massage table. I love massage tables. In Japan, they taste tattoo on the floor in some cases, right? Reed mat and, you know, sterile covers and stuff. Anyways, what we do is we take our person and we lay them on their side, right? We point their shoulder up towards the ceiling, right? So if their shoulder's here, this is pointing up. When it's pointing up, you can always adjust your massage tables. Modern ones have those pins on the side. You can just unscrew and kind of set the heights. We bring it down low enough to where our arms are not at that like 90 degree angle. Just maybe be uh, maybe at 90, maybe a little bit less, right? So we can stand over top and we can just relax our shoulders, make sure our back is straight and get closer to the actual tattoo. If you want the person facing you or facing away, if you're gonna be working on the front or the back of the shoulders, not a big deal. You just make sure that they get as close as they can to that edge of the massage table, which makes sure that your weight tolerance on this is good for some people. Um, if you're just, I had a dude who was like six, eight and 350 pounds. He got on my massage table once it's rated for 400 pounds. Who we, that thing was screeching. But I knew that it could take 400 pounds. I even asked him, like, how much do you weigh? It was probably not the most tactful thing to do, but he's like, you know, about around 350. I'm like, okay, we should be good. Just don't jump, right? Anyways, um, get them as close as they can to the edge of a weight, like, <laughs> like a moderately, I don't know, a sturdy base, okay? And then you can just, you just working right here. I have a freezer that we talk over this whole time because it's just in the garage. So I can just pretend that someone's here and I could just work like this, right? It's, it's easy, it's nice and simple. You, you, you can set up your trays. If you get a mayo stand that's adjustable, let's say you're right-handed or left-handed or whatever, all you do is you're just gonna put yourself wherever you are closest to this, right? You can work there, you can sit on a chair, you can stand up, whatever, and just put that stand right at where it should be, right? It should be just right in between your like nipple and belly button line. So in your turn, you just grab and go. It makes it super efficient when you're working on people that way, right? So that's the easiest way. What's the less easiest way to do this? The least easiest way. I guess like sitting in a chair and just holding your arms up is like really not good, but if we need to, instead of sitting in that same situation we had before where we have someone, let's just, I keep pulling the wrong size marker up. Instead of having someone, let's have our person sitting here again, right? This one's actually kind of good. If we grab an armrest, we do have an armrest, right? It's just gonna be sitting here. And we have our person's arm kind of draped over top of it. 
make sure that that armrest is actually up a little bit higher, right? We don't want to get their arms so that it's at like a 90 degree or like perpendicular line to the floor, like 90 degrees off their body or perpendicular to the floor. We want to be a little bit underneath so that their shoulder can stay relaxed, right? And we also don't want to have it crunched up to stretch and skin when it's like all bundled up. It sucks. Um, We'll do this, have your person who's sitting there kind of lean their head to the side if you're working on like a shoulder that's opposite, they lean away from it, right? That'll give you a little bit more stretch on the arm that's here. And then you have to stand when you do this, right? You'll be standing, oh geez, that's, yeah. Dikembe um, Mutombo. We'll be standing to do this. Just arms, you know, nice and relaxed, being relatively gentle, blah, 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 blah. And if we're standing up and doing it like this, instead of sitting, what we're doing is we're taking our arms from here, we're putting them to here, and we change how our weight is actually balanced when we're standing, right? Uh, when, I mean, when we're doing the work. When we're standing, we're able to use our core and our back, which is gonna make sure that your back doesn't get super tired or hunched over when you're working. And it'll also keep you kind of moving, right? You'll be making sure to be taking breaks. So you know, like every 30 minutes to an hour, you can do that. That will be a chance for this person to relax their arm as well. So they can get some blood flow and they don't end up getting, you know, like numb fingers, which will increase swelling when like the blood flow starts to return. Like it's just easier this way, right? So that's, that's usually the best. I mean, if you don't have an armrest, and you don't have a massage table, but you're working, I mean, you're just gonna have to kind of suffer, um, which sucks. Um, the only thing I'd say is if you don't have either of those and you are working on a shoulder, is take a lot of breaks, right? Take breaks. <sighs> take breaks. When you take breaks, you need to do something to kind of engage your core so that it stays even with the amount of exertion that you're doing with your back. Right, stretch backward, do some air crunches, twist your body, go for a walk, you know, down the shop, stay up on your feet for about 10 minutes after you've been doing something like this for an hour, right? Go out, rest your eyes, and just, just take a break. Um, if you feel bad for taking breaks, because I, I don't know why people do in this industry, but you just do, don't. It's okay to take breaks, especially if you know that if you're going to hurt doing this tattoo and it will affect the quality of the tattoo, it's better for you to take a break and ensure better quality work, right? Anyways, that's it. Shoulders are done. Uh, we'll do another one soon. Uh, like, subscribe, let us know what you think. Do the check on the weekly check-in, or bi-weekly. I don't know, we'll do it every one, two, maybe four weeks, I don't know. Check the check-in video, leave us some comments, check out the website, and pass that. Thanks for watching. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.